Very shalom, shalom. Before I get started, I want to start off by giving all honor and glory to Yahweh Bahashim Yahawashai Bahashim Rikah Kodash Laiwalam Yum. Double honors to my apostles and elders at Great Millstone. Shalom to the elect, the ones out there doing this work diligently and chiefly keeping the faith, making your calling and your election sure. I'm going to get right into it. This is going to be a reading over Ibaria. Chapter 8 or Hebrews chapter 8 in the NLT. This is Hebrews chapter 8, verse 1. It says, Here is the main point. We have a high priest who sat down in the place of honor beside the throne of the majestic God in heaven. So, who is this talking about? It's talking about Yahweh Shai. Right? After Yahweh Shai gave his life up for the people, he, he, he went up to the Shemayim and sat down in this place. Right? Sat down on the right hand side of Yahweh. Right until until the time of vengeance, until the time that he returns. Okay, verse two it says, "There he ministers in the heavenly temple uh, tabernacle, the true place of worship that was built by the Lord and not by human hands." Three. Uh, now the you know this you know heaven is going to be right here on earth. Okay, the scripture says that. Thy will, uh, what's that? Matthew chapter six. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. You see, so you know this whole earth is gonna have to worship Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai, in it in its proper order. Okay. <laughs> Verse two it says, "There he ministers in the heavenly tabernacle, the true place of worship that was built by the Lord and not by human hands." Continuing on in verse three. And since every high priest is required to offer gifts and sacrifices, our high priest must make an offering too. Continuing on, if he were here on earth, he would not be even slaki. If he were here on earth, he would not even be a priest, since there already are priests who offer the gifts required by the law. They serve in a system of worship that is only a copy, a shadow of the real one in heaven. For when Moses was getting ready to build the tabernacle, God gave him this warning. Be sure that you make everything according to the pattern I have shown you here on the mountain. <laughs> but now, Yahweh Shai, who the word ignorantly calls Jesus, our high priest has been given a ministry that is far superior to the old priesthood, Watch this, for he is the one who mediates for us a far better covenant with God based on better promises. All right, so our Lord is our mediator, right? He died for our sins so that way we can be brought into a better covenant, okay? You know, that's why we went off on a grand scheme of things. We went off to, to have a hope in Yahweh Shai, okay, if you can receive it. All right. This is 2 Corinthians 3 and 6. He has enabled us to be ministers of his new covenant. This is a covenant not of written laws, but of the spirit. The old written covenant ends in death, but under the new covenant, the spirit gives life. Okay. Why did the why did the um the old covenant end in death? It ended in death because, you know, the people wasn't made to measure up to it. Okay, the law is perfect. The law shall endure forever. It's the people that went off. It's the people that couldn't keep the law. So under the new covenant, the people will be made to keep the law. The people will be designed to keep it perfectly. Okay, that's why it's going to give us life, you know. And this old covenant by the law, 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 and being any susceptible bodies being in these bodies that's prone to sin right you know the the wages of sin is what death all right but through Yahweh Shah Hamashiach through his mediation through his sacrifice now we're able to what spring to life through the spirit all right Second Corinthians 3 and 9, if the old way which brings condemnation was glorious, 
how much more glorious is the new way, which makes us right with God. You see, Yahweh Shai is the way. He's the truth. He's the light. We can't go to the Father without going through the Son, without going through Yahweh Shai. <laughs> Galatians 3 and 19, why then was the law given? It was given alongside the promise to show people their sins. But the law was designed to last only until the coming of the child who was promised. Talk about Yahweh Shai. Yahweh gave his law through angels to Moses, who was the mediator between God and the people. Okay, so Moses was the mediator on earth at that time, you know, uh, under Egypt. Okay. And Yahweh Shai is the mediator in this time, you know, under this modern day Pharaoh, which is America. <laughs> okay. Hebrews 12 and 24, you have come to Yahweh Shai, the one who mediates the new covenant between God and people. And what? And the Israelites don't get caught up in people right here. You know, that's not talking about everybody It's talking about the Israelites. All right, it says, and to the sprinkled blood, which speaks of forgiveness instead of crying out for vengeance, like the blood of Abel. Okay. Romans 9 and 4, they are the people of Israel chosen to be God's adopted children. See, the people of Israel, God revealed his glory to them. He made covenants with them and gave them his law. He gave them the privilege of worshiping him and receiving his wonderful promises, right? So the Lord blessed the people of Israel, right? The Lord put the people of Israel, you know, in, in their spot to be the true worshipers of him. <clears throat> okay. Galatians 3 and 18, for if the inheritance could be received by keeping the law, then it would not be the result of accepting God's promise. But God graciously gave it to Abraham as a promise. Galatians 3 and 20. Now a mediator is helpful if more than one party must reach an agreement. But God, who is one, did not use a mediator when he gave his promise to Abraham. All right. And, and the promises goes through who? Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. That's the lineage of promises, right? The lineage that the promises go through. Titus 1 and 2, this truth gives them confidence that they have eternal life, which God, who does not lie, promised them before the world began. All right. So this truth right here gives us the confidence we need. All right. Eventually we will have eternal life according to the promises the Lord made to our forefathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. All right. This is Hebrews 8 and 7, continuing on. It says, or Ibaria. Uh, uh, chapter 8 verse 7 if the first covenant had been faultless there would have been no need for a second covenant to replace it you see so the Lord had to find fault with us verse 8 but when God found fault with the people he said the day is coming says the Lord when I will make a new covenant with the people of Israel and Judah all right talking about the 12 tribes of Israel <laughs> The Lord is going to make a new covenant with his people, and it starts when we get those new bodies. All right. You know, when we get those new bodies, that's when you know we're in a new covenant because we will no longer sin. Hebrews 8 and 9. This covenant will I so like it, this covenant will not be like the one I made with their ancestors when I took them by the hand and led them out of the land of Egypt. They did not remain faithful to my covenant. So I turned my back on them, says the Lord. You see? So through our unfaithfulness, right? Through our disobedience, the Lord turned his back on us and we went into slavery unto these other nations. But now through Yahweh Shai, the Lord is looking upon us now again, okay? You know, through the blood of Yahweh Shai, through that sacrifice, he's able to look upon us again and, and, and remove us from these sinful bodies. You know, remove us from, from death. 
So there's several precepts out here. You know, several precepts on that. This is Hebrews 8 and 10, but this is the new covenant I will make with the people of Israel on that day. With the people of who? The people of Israel, says the Lord. I will put my laws in their minds and I will write them on their hearts. I will be their power and they will be my people. You see, so in the new covenant, the Lord will put the laws in our minds, right? We will be able to keep the laws perfectly. All right. Right now we can't do that, but eventually in that new covenant, we're going to be able to do that. And that's why the kingdom of heaven is going to last forever, right? It's going to last forever because the people are going to last forever. All right. The people will never die. Okay. Jeremiah 31 and 33. But this is the new covenant I will make with the people of Israel on that day, says the Lord. I will put my instructions deep within them and I will write them on their hearts. I will be their God and they will be my people. Jeremiah 32 and 40. And I will make an everlasting covenant with them. I will never stop doing good for them. I will put a desire in their hearts to worship me and they will never leave me. Whoo. Whoo. And that's starting now, man, with this truth. You got the elect who, who desire to worship the Lord, right? And before you know it, the entire nation and the kingdom are going to be uh, worshiping the Lord, okay? Ezekiel 11 and 19, and I will give them singleness of heart and put a new spirit within them. I will take away their stony, stubborn heart, meaning mind, and give them a tender, responsive mind or heart. You see, the Lord got us, man. All right. And we just got to keep moving. OK. James 1 and 18, he chose to give birth to us by giving us his true word. And we out of all creation became his prized possession. Whoo. First Peter 1 and 3, uh, 1 and 23, for you have been born again but not to a life that will quickly end. Your new life will last forever because it comes from the eternal living word of power. We're going to be able to live forever, man. <clears throat> the Lord got us. Jeremiah 24 and 7, I will give them hearts to recognize me as the Lord. They will be my people and I will be their power for they will return to me wholeheartedly. Jeremiah 31 and 1, in that day, says the Lord, I will be the God of all the families of Israel. Talking about the 12 tribes and they will be my people. The list goes on. Look at all these precepts, man. Look, Zechariah 13 and 9, I will bring that group through the fire and make them pure. I will refine them like silver and purify them like gold. They will call on my name and I will answer them. I will say, these are my people and they will say, the Lord is our power. Whew. Matthew 22 and 32, this is Yahweh Shai speaking this in red. It says, I am the power, right? The God, the power of Abraham, the power of Isaac, and the power of Jacob. So he is the power of the living, not the dead. You know? Hey man, the precepts goes on and on, man. This covenant is only for the Israelites. Okay? And I showed you that through various precepts. Okay? Now, this is another telltale sign to show you that we're not in the kingdom yet. Also, it's another telltale sign to show you that we're not in a new covenant. Hebrews chapter 8 and verse 11. And they will not need to teach their neighbors, nor will they need to teach their relatives, saying, You should know the Lord, for everyone from the least to the greatest will know me already. You see, that's what's going to happen when we when we had those new covenant, or when we had that new, new covenant. That's what's going to happen when we get in those new bodies, right? When we're in the kingdom, all shall know the Lord from least to greatest. We're not in a new covenant now. We're still under grace. We're we're under a grace period. <sighs> we're in between, right? We're, we're under the old covenant, but it's under grace, right? We haven't transferred into the new covenant yet, okay? We're still under the old covenant, but the Lord has given us grace in this time. We're in a grace period, you know? Hebrews 8 and 12, and I will forgive their wickedness and I will never again remember their sins. 
Verse 13, when God speaks of a new covenant, it means he has made the first one obsolete. It is now out of date and will soon disappear. So it will soon disappear. It's not, it haven't disappeared yet. All right. You're going to know when we in those new, you're going to know when we're in a new covenant. <laughs> All right. When we get those new bodies, man, you're going to know we're in a new covenant when we keeping the laws perfectly under Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah. All right. So hopefully this is edifying. I'm going to end it by giving all honor and glory to Yahweh Bahashim Yahweh Shai Bahashim Rekakwadash Lai Walam Yam. Double honors once again to my apostles and elders at Great Millstone. Shalom one once again to the elect. Don't let your sins weigh you down. Don't let your iniquities lift up themselves. That's what they want to do. It's our job to repent and keep it moving through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bahashim Yahweh Shai. Shalom one Yashar Allah. On to the next one.